the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students i know you all are very much busy in appearing or preparing for your moral exams i could see some tensions that is running in your faces and mind see nothing is impossible in life children everything is possible if you have a systematic way of doing things if you do yourself with a proper planning according to the timetable definitely you will become successful so children have asked me to uh, give a revision class on the focus area so here i'm going to give some revision on the focus area that has been important for you and uh, the request has come to start with organic chapter so i'm starting with the organic and definitely we'll go for other chapters also so let us begin the class today we are going to start with halo alkanes and halo arenes so in halo alkanes and halo arenes halo is nothing but halogen group that is the 17th group are called as halogens now when i say halo alkanes you have an alkyl group along with an halogen and when we call halo arenes you have an aryl group along with a halogen now those halogens can be fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine now according to the focus area we have the preparations right from alcohols from hydrocarbons from alkenes and electrophilic reactions so there in alcohols that is if you want to prepare a halo alkane from an alcohol you have some five methods of preparation the first method see along with each common reaction i have given an example also roh when oh group is added to an alkane you call it as an alcohol so r refers to my alkyl group there is an oh when treated with hx hx can be hcl it can be hbr in the presence of zn cl2 zinc chloride you get a removal of water molecule the water molecule get removed here and you get your halo alkane so in the place of r maybe in the exam you will be given methanol or ethanol or propanol any alcohol so any alcohol when you take in presence of hcl in zinc chloride it gives that corresponding alkyl halide if it is ethanol you get ethyl chloride if it is methanol you get methyl chloride or chloromethane along with the removal of water so that is the first step the second step is alcohol when it is treated with pcl5 with phosphorus halides you have two important reaction one is with phosphorus trichloride pcl3 next with phosphorus pentachloride pcl5 so here roh plus pcl3 gives rcl plus h3po3 so this product remains the same there is no change in that when an alcohol reacts with pcl3 so here i have taken ethanol ethanol when reacts with pcl3 phosphorus trichloride you get ethyl chloride or chloroethane along with h3po3 now the next reaction is any alcohol when it is treated with pcl5 phosphorus pentachloride you don't get the same product but instead you get uh, alkyl chloride that is alkyl halide plus pocl3 plus hcl along with your halo alkane you get pocl3 and hcl so here also i have used propanol propanol gives chloropropane 
POCl3 and HCl. The next reaction is a most important reaction where when alcohol reacts with thionyl chloride SOCl2 this reaction is very important and thionyl chloride is the best reagent for the preparation of haloalkanes because the products that we get in the reaction SO2 and HCl are escapable gases which means once the product is formed they escape they become volatile so you get only your alkyl halides you get only pure alkyl halides so again ethanol plus SOCl2 gives ethyl chloride plus SO2 plus HCl the last reaction from alcohols is alcohols when it is treated with chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine, anything X2 in the presence of red phosphorus you get your alkyl halide or haloalkanes. So these are the five reactions when alcohol is treated with HCl, PCl3, PCl5, SOCl2 and X2 in the presence of red phosphorus. The next reaction is from hydrocarbons which we have already learnt if you remember children methane when it is treated with a halogen in presence of sunlight that is when sunlight is being used you get a continuous chain reaction that is you get mono di substituted haloalkanes monochloro that is mono that is chloromethane dichloromethane trichloromethane and tetrachloromethane. So mixture of haloalkanes have been formed. So thus such reactions are even called a substitution where all the hydrogen are replaced by the halogen atom. Now we have some more preparations in the focus area which we will be seeing now. Next one again from hydrocarbons you have two other preparation. The second preparation through is an electrophilic substitution reaction. Children I have told you Electrophiles are those species which have less electron means they are electron deficient species and these electrophiles will search for an electron rich center. Benzene has got electron rich I mean they are having lot of electrons which are delocalized into the benzene ring. So chlorine now is an electrophile so Cl will be attacking the benzene and you get chlorobenzene. So how this reaction take place? Benzene when it is treated with any halogen in the presence of Lewis acid as a catalyst like anhydrous aluminium chloride you get your halobenzene that is aryl halides these are aromatic chlorides aromatic halides okay so chlorobenzene plus HCl. Another example I have given here methyl benzene which is toluene Toluene when it is treated with halogen in the presence of iron as catalyst in dark condition you get ortho halotoluene and para halotoluene where my X can be chlorine and bromine. Now these ortho and para products can be separated because there is a large difference in their melting point. Because of the large difference they can easily be separated once the products are formed. The next reaction is a very important reaction as of this lesson is concerned. It is Sandmeyer reaction. In Sandmeyer reaction, we take aniline which is a primary aromatic amine. So this aniline, when it is treated with a mineral acid like HCl or HBr, so I am taking it as HX, in the presence of sodium nitrite, you get here benzene diazonium halide. This is benzene diazonium halide. This is a very important intermediate form. Now this when it is treated with cuprous halides Cu2Cl2 or Cu2Br2 you get your corresponding haloarene. So if you take Cu2Cl2 you get chlorobenzene plus nitrogen. If you take Cu2Br2 you get bromobenzene plus nitrogen. But Iodine products cannot be prepared using this method. So if I want to prepare iodobenzene, I will be treating this benzene diazonium halide with Ki which is potassium iodide. So when I use potassium iodide, I get iodobenzene plus nitrogen. So these are the reactions from where you can prepare your aromatic halides from hydrocarbons. Now we'll see this is the last preparation from alkenes. And the last preparation of 
Halo alkenes is from alkenes where there are two preparations. One is from hydrogen halides that is it can be HCl or HBr. Next is from halogens which can be Br2 or Cl2. Now here we follow a rule which is called as Markovnikov rule. I hope you remember children when an unsymmetrical alkene is treated with HX or HBr hydrogen halide the negative part of this reagent will be getting added to the carbon which is bearing less hydrogen atoms. So when I take propene this is unsymmetrical because across the double bond the groups are different. So in such situations when I treat it with HBr you have H plus and Br minus. So Br minus is the negative part this negative part will be going to the carbon which is having less number of hydrogen atoms because we know any addition reaction the reagent will get added across the double bond that is it gets added to the carbon that is having the double bond. So here in that situation this Br- minus will be going to the second carbon and not the first carbon. This is called as Markovnikov rule. So here I get two bromopropane as a major product and one bromopropane will be the minor product. In fact you don't get this to a larger extent maybe 18 to 20 percent. Now this will be of a major content maximum to 80 percent you get your two bromopropane. The next reaction is addition in same way alkenes get added to halogens in the presence of carbon tetrachloride as a solvent. Now what should happen actually this is nothing but Br, Br. So these two Br get added across the double bond. So when they get added across the double bond, double bond becomes single. So you get CH2Br, CH2Br which I can name it as 1,2-dibromoethane. Now this compound is called as vicinal dihalide. Why is it called so? What do you mean by vicinity? Vicinity means adjacent, nearby or I can say close by. So these are the adjacent carbons or a closed ca close carbons. So each Br get added to the next next carbon that is adjacent carbons. So we get vicinal dihalides. But the other form of vicinal dihalide is nothing but gem dihalides where what happens here is both this get added to the same carbon. What happens here? Both the halogen gets added to the same carbon you get CH2, CBr2. Those are called as gem dihalides but here you have only vicinal dihalides. So with this the preparations of haloalkanes are over. So we have learned the preparations from alcohols. In that only we have learned from HCl, PCl3, PCl5, SOCl2 and X2. Then we learned from hydrocarbons. The first one is free radical halogenation continuous substitution reaction then we learnt electrophilic substitution reaction with benzene and toluene then we learnt Sandmeyer reaction from aniline how you get benzene diazonium chloride and then the last one is from alkenes first one is Markovnikov rule and the second one is preparation of vicinal dihalides. Now we will be seeing some of the important properties or the reactions of haloalkenes chemical reactions of haloalkanes. Now listen very carefully children because if you can understand the base that is the reaction the mechanism what is happening it will be easy for you to write with any example which is being asked in the exam. Rx plus KOH gives ROH plus KX. What is happening here? Removal of KX that is this halide will combine with the potassium here. So you get ROH which is my alcohol plus a potassium halide. If I take aqueous sodium hydroxide I get sodium halide. So this X can be chlorine, bromine, any halogen. The same haloalkane when it is treated with water again you prepare alcohol instead of KX in this H plus and OH minus is present. So this OH minus comes and attack the replaces the halogen. So halogen combines with hydrogen and comes out as hydrogen halide. The third example third reaction is 
haloalkane when it is treated with sodium alkoxide RONA now what is happening here X will combine with the sodium and comes out as sodium halide now what is left here ROR you remember this ROR children it's called as an ether alkoxy alkane so if you want to prepare ether from haloalkanes you need to treat it with sodium alkoxide it can be potassium alkoxide any salt metal salt with its alkyl alkoxide the next reaction is an exchange halogen exchange reaction what is happening here haloalkane when treated with sodium iodide iodine goes and replaces chlorine so this again a haloalkane is formed but there is an exchange of halogen taking place in the place of chlorine say let's example chlorine is there chlorine will be replaced by iodine and sodium will combine with the chlorine and comes out as sodium chloride the last reaction is where you get continuous salts of ammonium that is rx when it is treated with ammonia you get rnh2 primary amine secondary amine tertiary and quaternary ammonium salt so these are a continuous reaction just like our free radical halogenation so these are the first five chemical reactions of haloalkanes we have six more reactions which we'll be seeing now the next set of reactions of haloalkanes are as follows the first reaction is with potassium cyanide see the first two reactions the reagents are uh, they somewhat they look similar but the product that we get will be entirely different see haloalkanes when it is treated with potassium cyanide here you get rcn which is alkyl cyanide in cn we have studied about ambident nucleophiles what are ambident nucleophiles ambident means the nucleophile can attack through both the centers that is carbon is also an attacking center nitrogen is also an attacking center so when i say cn haloalkane when it is treated with potassium cyanide i get rcn plus kx but the same rx when it is treated with silver cyanide i don't get rcn instead i get rnc which is a alkyl isocyanide or carbylamine i can say so this is an isocyanide where n is the nitrogen is the attacking atom so what happens here i get cyanide and isocyanide when it is treated with kcn and silver cyanide the similar reactions are haloalkanes when it is treated with potassium nitrate in no2 again nitrogen is an attacking center oxygen is also an attacking center so when it is treated with potassium nitrite i get alkyl nitrite where oxygen is the attacking center when it is treated with silver nitrite i get nitroalkanes where nitrogen becomes the attacking atom so these four reactions you don't get confused children if potassium cyanide is used you get a alkyl cyanide if silver cyanide is used you get isocyanide but the opposite is when potassium is used you get ono and if you use silver nitrite you get no2 the next reaction is haloalkanes when it is treated with metal salts that is silver salts of carboxylic acid you get an ester that is this halogen combines with silver and get precipitated as silver halide and what is left over is rcoor so you get an ester here so this is again for the formation of ester and the last reaction is a reduction reaction haloalkanes with nascent hydrogen you use lithium aluminum hydride which is a very very powerful reducing agent so what happens here haloalkanes must be reduced only to your hydrocarbons that is alkanes so you get rh plus hx so these are the important 11 reactions as a chemical properties of haloalkanes now we will just get into nucleophilic substitution reaction 1 and 2 we have a comparison of the difference between sn1 and sn2 in the next slide okay the next important topic 
in this chapter is SN1 and SN2 mechanism. What is SN1? Substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Now, what are the main specifications that is given under substitution nucleophilic unimolecular? Are it is a two step reaction, that is, the reaction occurs in two steps. There is a carbocation which is formed during the course of reaction. So, you get a carbocation which is formed, and it is a first order reaction. How do we find the order in chemical kinetics chapter? We have learned that. The order is nothing but the concentration that is the power of the concentration of product by reactants or it depends on the concentration of the reactants that has been used in the reaction. So here it depends only on the concentration of one of the reactant so we call it as a first order reaction. Then there is a retention of configuration. Retention means there is no change in the reactant structure. That is when the product is formed, there is no change that however the reactant was there after the substitution, the product is also the same. The configuration is not inverted. And the last one is which we will be discussing once we learn the reaction. Now here you can see a tertiary alkyl halide. Carbon which is holding my halide ion is connected to three carbon atoms so we know it is called as tertiary. So tertiary alkyl halide is going to give its tertiary carbocation with the removal of this halide ion. So in the first step what is happening this halogen atom comes out leaving the reactant as halide ion. So you get Br- minus being removed. So once this Br- minus is removed we know there is no bond formation. So there is an intermediate which we call it as a tertiary carbocation. So there is a carbocation which is formed during the first step. Now this is a very slow step because there is a removal of the halogen atom and the concentration depends only on one of the reactant which is my tertiary alkyl halide. So that's why this step is called as a rate determining step or we also say because of that it is called as a first order reaction. So now once this intermediate carbocation is formed what it is needs to do? The second step will be the attack of the nucleophile. Now which is my nucleophile here? This is my leaving group it has already left the reactant. Now OH- is a nucleophile which will be attacking my carbon center because nucleophile will be attacking the carbon or the center where there is no electron or it will look for electron deficient center. So OH- has more electrons so it search for a plus center which is there in the tertiary carbocation. So it attacks the carbon and forms a tertiary alkyl al alcohol. So what happens here? The attack of the nucleophile is very very fast. So here if you see the structure C with 3 methyl groups, carbon with 3 methyl groups, in the place of Br there is a substitution of OH. So this is called as retention of configuration. There is no change in the configuration. And why do we say substitution reactions which are unimolecular can easily be favored by tertiary alkyl halides and not by primary. Why? Because we have learnt in our previous class that the stability of the cation increases as the number of alkyl group increases. So that is easily be understood that tertiary carbocation will be more stable than secondary which is more stable again than primary. So when we take a tertiary alkyl halide you get a stable tertiary carbocation. When I take secondary that becomes less stable and primary of course the stability will be very very poor. So this question comes often in the exam why SN1 is favorable for tertiary. So the reason is very simple children the intermediate carbocation will be more stable with tertiary than the secondary and primary. So this is SN1. 
Now, what about SN2? Again, it is substitution nucleophile bimolecular. When I say bimolecular, it is SN2. That is, it is a one step reaction. In the whole single step, the entire reaction is being carried out. Here, we do not have any intermediate that is formed just like our carbocation. There is no intermediate and it is a second order reaction where the rate of reaction depends on the concentration of two reactants, two species. Inversion of configuration. In SN1, we learnt there is a retention but here there is going to be a change in the configuration and here the favoring alkyl halides will be primary, then secondary, then tertiary. Now let us see how the reaction will proceed. Now OH- is a nucleophile. This is my primary alkyl halide. I have CH3Cl. So what happens here? OH- need to attack my carbon, right? So what happens? Already there is chlorine here. So it cannot attack from that side. So it comes and attacks the carbon from the back side. That is not from the side of chlorine, but from the opposite side of chlorine. So when this attacks, there is a transition state, it is not an intermediate, there is a large of difference children. Transition state will be unstable and it holds only for a few seconds. So this is a state where you can see carbon having 5 bonds. Carbon is tetravalent but at this particular state carbon will be having 5 bonds out of which 3 of them hydrogen and 2 of them will be a temporary bonds where the OH bond is going to be stronger and the CL bond is about to be weaker. That is the CCL bond is going to get break and the OH bond is going to get formed. So this is a transition state where you can see carbon with five different atoms at the same level. So out of which you can see at the next step, it is not a next step, at the same step one this CCl bond breaks, the Cl comes out as chloride ion which is a leaving group and you get OH formed at the other side. So this is my reactant and this is my product. If you see the configuration, the Cl is on the right side here, OH is on the left side. That's why we say it is an inversion of configuration. And here primary is more favorable because if I take a tertiary alkyl halide, now what happens if all these are my methyl groups, it is very difficult for the nucleophile to come and attack the carbon. What could be the reason children? Because we have learnt that as the number of bulky group increases, because this is pure visualization where we visualize that these are oriented in the space. So we don't know how much space each methyl group is going to occupy. So when I'm going to have three methyl groups here, definitely there is going to be a steric hindrance that is it is not going to allow this OH- minus to come and attack the carbon so easily. It is going to be very 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 difficult. At that point of time OH- minus can attack easily only with primary alkyl halides. So that is why we say primary alkyl halides easily can undergo SN2 reactions compared to our secondary and tertiary. So these are the main differences between SN1 and SN2 reactions. Now we will see some of the haloarenes reaction, electrophilic substitution reactions of haloarenes. Now we are going to learn about the electrophilic substitution reactions of haloarenes. That is just like we have learnt about haloalkanes reacting with lithium aluminium hydride with aqueous alkali or reaction with ammonia, silver cyanide, potassium cyanide like that. We have electrophilic substitution reaction when we are going to learn with haloarenes. This is chlorobenzene, maybe in exam instead of chlorine you may get bromine. So chlorobenzene, the first reaction is halogenation. What is halogenation? the reactant is going to get added with another halogen atom. So here chlorobenzene when it reacts with chlorine in the presence of anhydrous ferrous chloride FeCl3 as catalyst you get here para and ortho that is 1,2 dichloro and 1,4 dichlorobenzene out of which the para product will be the major product in all the electrophilic substitution reactions. The next one is nitration. 
So here the ortho and the para product only will be affected or will be substituted by the reactions that is the reagents electrophile whichever we are taking. So in nitration NO2 acts as an electrophile, chlorobenzene the nitrating mixture is nitric acid in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid you get 1 4 that is uh, 1 chloro 4 nitrobenzene and 1 chloro 2 nitrobenzene. So where the para again and the ortho product are getting uh, ortho uh, positions are getting attracted by the nitronucleophile. The next one is sulfonation. So in nitration we were using a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. In sulfonation we are going to use only concentrated sulfuric acid and slightly warm it. So halobenzene or chlorobenzene when it is treated with concentrated sulfuric acid you get 2 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid and 4 chlorobenzene sulfuric acid. Again ortho and the para positions are being occupied by SO3H which is my electrophile. The next two reactions are Friedel craft alkylation and this is Friedel craft acylation. When I say alkylation, CH3Cl, CH3 will be my alkyl part which is getting added to my benzene. So here I get orthochlorotoluene. We know benzene, methyl benzene is nothing but toluene. So when chlorine is there, you get orthochlorotoluene or parachlorotoluene. Similarly, when this is treated with acid chloride that is CH3COCl in this CH3CO plus becomes my electrophile. So when this gets attacked to my halobenzene, I get orthochloroacetophenone and parachloroacetophenone. Because when Cl is not present, benzene with CHOCH3 is called as acetophenone. So in the presence of chlorine, this is at the ortho position and this comes at the para position. So you call it as orthochloroacetophenone and parachloroacetophenone. So these are the reactions of haloarenes with different reagents. So name reactions we have halogenation, nitration, sulfonation, Friedel-Craft alkylation and acylation. Both in the Friedel-Craft alkylation and acylation we use anhydrous aluminium chloride as your catalyst to enhance the rate of the reaction. In this lesson, we have in the important compounds as chloroform where you need to learn some of its properties and why it is being stored in the dark bottles and kept away from sunlight. Simple reason, when chloroform gets exposed to oxygen, we know there is a formation of a very poisonous gas which is called as phosgene. So that is a very important reaction which is given in your textbook. So as of this lesson, the focus area is being covered children. If you have any doubt, do let me know no, please don't hesitate to call me. Thank you children. With this, the, this video is getting over. With the next video, I will be updating you with alcohol, phenols and ethers. Thank you.